Welcome to Texan Math. Today we're taking a look at the STAR assessment from 2013 for Algebra 1. Uh, we will be examining 10 of the lowest scoring items on this test. And today we're looking at item number 6. Let's read it. The perimeter of a rectangle is 42 centimeters. The length of the rectangle can be represented by x plus 4 and its width can be represented by 2x minus 7. What are the dimensions of this rectangle in centimeters? Um, we have four answer choices. Now the first thing I would uh, suggest you look at is the perimeter of the rectangle is 42 centimeters. It's possible that we could eliminate an, some answer choices just by looking at that statement. Uh, so let's make sure that the perimeter is actually 42 centimeters for these answer choices. For the perimeter be, to be 42 centimeters, uh, I'm just going to sketch a rectangle here. All four sides of that rectangle must add up to 42 centimeters. So um, you'll notice these don't have units, but for the perimeter to be 42 centimeters, these would all be centimeter length. So we're going to assume that. Uh, the length is 10 and the width is 11. That's a little unusual because we normally see um, the length longer than the width, but that they're interchangeable, so that's fine. So let's check. Does 11 plus 10 plus 11 plus 10 equal 42? Now, if you want to make sure that's true, you can type it into your graphing calculator. And uh, it is 42. So that one checks. Let's do another one. You'll notice I'm not really looking at the numbers as I sketch these. So I'm, there's no reason to try to get these perfectly to scale. Um, I wouldn't spend a lot of time trying to do that. All right, I've got length of 8 uh, and a width of 13. So I went ahead and labeled this triangle, I mean, this rectangle. So we'll do. Let's check and make sure. Well, what do you know? That one's 42 also. So it's looking like these are checking out. It's nice if we can go ahead and eliminate an answer, but that might not happen. Okay, so I've labeled the lengths and widths on this rectangle. So let's add them up and see. Well, and that one's 42. Uh, and then 12 and 9. And that was 42. So that didn't help us at all. Let's continue on. It says the length of the rectangle can be represented by x plus 4 and width represented by 2x minus 7. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to represent the length and the width now, it doesn't really matter which side you label length and which side you label width, so don't spend a lot of time thinking too much about that. I'm going to pick a side and label that x plus 4. So we're going to say the length of the rectangle is represented by x plus 4. And you'll note that both the, uh, the opposite sides should have the same label, so we're going to put x plus 4 on two sides. And then width is represented by... 2x minus 7. So I'm going to let these two be 2x minus 7. Okay, now it says what are the dimensions of the rectangle in centimeters? So it's real important here to notice it did not ask for the value of x, and that is a common mistake that some students might make on this problem. They may look for the value of x. When they see a variable in an algebra problem, that's kind of the first thing that pops into mind. So they don't ask for that, but they ask for the dimensions of the rectangle in centimeters. Well, what I'm going to do to start with is go ahead and make an equation out of this first statement. It says the perimeter of a rectangle is 42 centimeters. That means that all four sides of this rectangle have to add up to 42 centimeters. Now you may simplify what I'm about to write, but it is not necessary. So keep in mind, uh, simplifying you might make an error. It may be better to go ahead and just leave it alone. So I'm going to type x plus 4 plus 2x minus 7 
plus x plus 4 plus 2x minus 7. And there's many different ways to write this. You could have used uh, 2 times x plus 4 in parentheses plus 2 times x minus 7, 2x minus 7 in parentheses. Or you can write this statement. They're equivalent. That They both mean perimeter. And then I'm going to say this whole thing must equal 42. Now, how can I solve this using a graphing calculator? I could do it manually, um, and that's fine if you're, you're really confident with your uh, solving skills. But, you know, if you're taking a test like this and you need to graduate, uh, you need to pass this to graduate and you've struggled in the past, it may be a wise decision to go ahead and put the whole thing into the graphing calculator. So let me show you what I've done here. I've gone to my y equals screen and I've put in uh, the entire expression. I've actually got them backwards here. Let me type it over. x plus 4 plus 2x minus 7 plus x plus 4 plus 2x minus 7. Yeah, I kind of reversed the the terms, but that's okay. I had all of them in there. And then on Y2, I've put the number 42. Now, I'm going to look at my window. I have this window set kind of unusual. Most windows, and I'll go ahead and make a normal viewing window. Uh, if you have your calculator during your test, this will be your window when you click on Window. This is a standard viewing window, and when they clear the memory of your calculator, this is what's going to show up if you have this brand of calculator uh, while you're taking the STAR test. And that may or may not work, so let's hit graph and see what happens. There's one line. I can only see one line in my graph. The other line, I actually know where that other line is. I have a horizontal line at the 42. Uh, on the y-axis because here I said y was equal to 42. So I need for my y values in my window to at least go to 42 or beyond that. So I'm going to take my y maximum and I'm going to go down here to the 10 and make it larger than 42. And by the way, you could choose anything. You could choose 100 if you want. I'm going to choose 50. And then I'm going to let my scale be zero. That means it takes the tick marks off the axis. You can set that scale to anything you like. You could count by tens or fives or twos. I don't know that counting by ones makes any sense. Or you can just take them off. And you take them off by putting a zero there. Now when I hit graph, it's going to show me the line I saw initially. Again, there it is. And then it's going to show me this horizontal line at the 42. What I would like to know is the x value that's right there. Now, I could guess what that is and type trace and put it in and figure out what is this x value down here. I could count over. That seems a little tedious. The buttons of the calculator can actually find that value for me. So let's use that feature. We're going to type second. And then up here where it says calc, C-A-L-C is right above this trace button. So type trace and then look for the word intersect and you'll see it there at 5. I want to know where these intersect so I can figure out what that x value is there. So I'm going to type 5 and then it asks you some questions but really you don't have to answer them. You can just type enter, enter, enter because you only have two graphs and then it'll tell you to guess. That means if you want to guess what this answer is you can. And here you have the intersection point. So the intersection point is x is 8 and y is 42. So x is 8. Now be careful. Here's where the mistake is made by some students. They'll see x is 8 and they'll look down here and go, oh, look at that. Answer choice G is the only one with an 8. Well, if you'll look at the item analysis for this test, which, by the way, is posted on the blog site for this problem, if you look at the item analysis, you'll notice that on item uh, 6 that a lot of students chose answer choice G for this question. In fact, the most popular wrong answer was G. Uh, and that means uh, they probably did that. They probably solved this equation correctly and got an 8, saw that 8 there and just chose it without really truly looking again at the question. But the answer did not say find the value of x. It said what are the dimensions of the rectangle in centimeters. And 8 is a value of x. It's not a dimension. 
So let me show you how to find the dimension. Let's first notice I have says x is equal to 8. So I want you to go to second mode. Now if you type x, let's just do this to show you what's happening here. If you type an x on your home screen and you type enter, it will tell you what value is assigned to x. And the value that's assigned to x is whatever you've assigned to x yourself or what's been assigned by that last screen that we just saw. So when you went in there and you found that intersection point, it's assigned that value, that intersection point for x and for the y as well. So now that I know that x is really 8, all I have to do is type in these two expressions. Let's see, one of them is x plus 4. And what it's doing is it's substituting the 8 for x and it's adding the 4 and I'm getting 12. And then I can type in 2x minus 7 and it's going to go ahead and put that 8 in there for the x and give me the value of 9. So the dimensions are 12 and 9 so the correct answer to this question is J. This question was answered correctly by only 38 percent of the students who took this test. That means 62% of the students miss this problem. If you will try some of these strategies when you take your STAR test on an item like this, you should improve your chance of getting this item correct. Again, the correct dimensions for the rectangle with the perimeter 42 centimeters was J. The length was 12 centimeters and the width was 9 centimeters.